It's the Locked On Flyers podcast for Friday, March 8th, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high-quality content that loves a big win against a top team. The kids are all right. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, and thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen every day. I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here, as always, with Russ Cohen, who's on all your favorite social media apps at Sportsology. We are at Locked On Flyers on Twitter, Instagram, Threads, and Blue Sky as well. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets. With any winning $5 bet, that's $150 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. You can subscribe or follow us for free over on YouTube or on the SiriusXM app or anywhere you get podcasts. Subscribe to get our latest episode as soon as it's available here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, Russ, as is often the case when you record a daily show, something happens immediately after you finish recording. Inevitably, Inevitably, as the Nick Sealer deal did. Uh, But I I do think we we talked about it pretty extensively on yesterday's show, even though it hadn't been uh, officially announced yet. And, you know, as, as far as how we did in predicting it, I think, you know, um, we knew it was going to be three to four years um, with an outside chance of it being five years. I think it was fair that, you know, it went down to 2.7 per year to get the extra year or two in the contract. So I think, you know, the AAV is fine. It's the four years I'm a little concerned about, but I don't think it's an insurmountable thing. Well, all right. So here, here's what upsets me about the four years. If you watched Adam Jennings tonight, you understand he could do the same job. And now you're blocking his path. And that's really what you're talking about. There's a guy, you have a guy that could do that job for less. And he might not be able to do it this minute, but he could do it in a, you know, by next year. And, and I think that's the issue here is this is a coach-driven signing. I get it. Look at the NTC and you know, why is the NTC for two years? Because Torts knows he's coaching for two more years. Okay, I mean, right. fine. But I'm just <laughs> saying when, if people want to at least get into my brain, that's how I think about it. I look at it and I say, okay, now let's look at the blue line and look at where this opportunity is. We see things tonight and it's a, it's a hard road for some of these guys to break into the Flyers' blue line. Yeah, I mean, one game isn't, you know, a pattern yet with, no. with Jenning, but but we've been watching him, you know, for a long time now, and especially him and Adder together make a yep. really good combo, really good pairing, and we saw a lot of that in the game against Florida. I yep. think, you know, Jenning was a little tentative at the beginning of the game, but once he settled in, he was fine, laid yep. out that big hit on Reinhardt. Yep. I think that both of them played really well. and They yeah, went up against I, I their think, top, Florida top line. Yeah, And that's they the did. thing. We talk and, about them playing together as a pairing because they knew each other. I said I would have brought them up at some point as a pairing mm-hmm. together like next year, and that would have been the Flyers' third pairing. But again, the whole organization has to be on board with stuff like that, and and right now they're not. Yeah, and I think, you know, it remains to be seen, but I do think that you're right. Like, Sealer is in the way of Jinning having as many opportunities as he might get moving forward. And, and um, Adderman's and, and do similar jobs, too, except Adderman's more physical, right? So at some point, they yeah. have to figure that one out, too, because, again, there are organizations that would kill to have three defensemen like that, three young defensemen that are cheap, that could do the job, and that could fill gaps. And right now the Flyers utilize the Mula only because they're afraid to send him down. I really, that's half of the, the reason they use him. The other half is uh, they do like his game some of the time. There's no question, yeah. but, but he never gets to really show it and pay and play big minutes. That's rare. Right. I mean, that's most of the time it's, you know, 12 minutes, 13, you know, about 12 minutes. Right. Or if they're going 11, right. seven minutes, 10. So those are the things that sort of, 
I look at when I'm looking at the long term. Enjoy the short term. It's a really good win. But I still yeah. I'm going to look at the long term because that's what I tend to do as well. Well, and that's what Danny Breer says he's doing, too. So I think it's a fair thing to do here. And, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you're going to look at the long term in terms of how you're judging the job they're doing, then sure, let's do that. And and, you know, those points are absolutely valid. Um, in addition to the sealer deal, uh, the Flyers were uh, shockingly the third party in a trade, yeah. uh, the Noah, the Noah Hannafin deal. He got a fifth rounder in this year's uh, draft for retaining 25% of that salary. Um, also, uh, Mikhail Vorobiev's um, rights were uh, part of that trade as well, which was really interesting. I hadn't really thought about him to be honest no i mean i think when the flyers sort of like said hey thanks but no thanks look i felt like he was rushed he had some good times as a, a young flyer though it's just and what was that under dave haxtell right and it just mm -hmm. they never seemed to find the right spot for him so then okay he goes back over to the khl regroups takes a little time and now at 27 you know he's got 41 points this year he's having a good year so this is like a very sneaky thing by Vegas under the radar because it came out way after the deal and they could sign him if they want. You know, his rights still exist until June 30th. Listen, if he were to come over and they fill a spot on an ELC with him and he does well, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ryan Johansson cleared waivers. He's going to be assigned to Lehigh Valley. But Danny Breer said... Uh, in his press conference that he's not a part of the plan for the future. Um, wasn't going to get into details on that because we know what those details are. We know the details. And, the whole world yes. knows the details. Right. So they're going to um, hold off on officially assigning him to the Phantoms until after the deadline passes to see if they can move him. But Sure. Um, Nobody's going to take him, even yeah. at $4 million. Yeah, no, totally. But uh, they're they're going to wait to assign him at least and give him the courtesy of that, I guess. It'll um, be nice for Le Lehigh Valley, but you know, again, a little voice in me says, "Is he going to show?" I don't know. So I don't wait know. and see. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, yeah. but uh, he he did also say Danny Breer said it was a tough decision to trade Walker, but the return, you know, deal was too good to pass yeah, up. It was a I good deal. You had to take it. I get it. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, but they're still staying the course and the expectations haven't accelerated uh, despite outperforming, you know, initial expectations this season. And their goal is to make the playoffs. But I, I don't think like if they don't, I don't think the season will be considered a failure either. No, no. But the thing is, I, I appreciate Danny saying that he wants to keep an eye on the future and everything else. That's great. But again, when these inevitable roadblocks come up on signings, that's when I feel like he has to take a more, um, a tougher, a tougher um, tack, tact with the uh, with the coach. And I feel like this off season, he kind of needs to spell out um, yeah. what those future plans are a little bit more. I just feel like it's not. I feel like again, the two are not operating the same way. Um, I do think that he was really smart to say the expectation for Jenning and Adder, you know, getting playing time wasn't to replace Walker, that the whole team has to step it up in order right. to fill that need. And they did. And I, I think yeah. that that was something that was really important. I'm glad he said it to kind of alleviate some of the pressure on those two in particular. Uh, but I don't I don't know that they needed it anyway, since they did so well. But right. Um, but it was just like last I appreciate game, you know. That. No. Right. It was just like last game when I heard Le Perrier say, well, they played, you know, Jennings played so well lately. Like we said, he's had a good year and we hope like we don't just say these things like we really do watch them play. And and we're really giving you mm -hmm. reports on how they're doing. And, and Rachel watches even more than I do because I get pulled in a million directions and I'm watching video half the times and not full games. But we watch it for a reason so we could actually have a handle yep. on, you know, how they're doing and what kind of impact they could have. Yeah, I, I, I love this pairing. Um, I do like seeing them split up from time to time just to make sure that they can adjust because sure. that's an important skill to have. But I think that um, they are a great pairing together and have done very well for themselves. 
Um, you know, in, in the meantime, there was more to this game than just the two of them, um, including some excellent goaltending on both sides of the ice. And we will talk more about that game versus Florida coming up. It's always a struggle to find time to make healthy eating decisions, but eating better is easy with Factors' delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Factors' two-minute meals are your secret weapon. Their ready-to-eat meal delivery takes the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success. You can skip the grocery stores, prep work, and cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. They've got over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, and veggie, plus over 60 add-ons like snacks, smoothies, breakfast, and more. You'll have a ton of nutritious and delicious options to kickstart healthy eating habits. And Factor is flexible. You can change your order up every week with as little or as much as you need, and you can pause or reschedule deliveries anytime. Head to factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50 and use that code locked on NHL 50 to get 50% off. That's code locked on NHL 50 at factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50. On next week's shows, of course, we will do a debrief of the trade deadline overall, uh, should anything else occur. We're going to talk about Flyers versus Tampa on Monday. We'll have our nemesis of the week and take a closer look at the next steps in this playoff race. Um, as far as this game against Florida, um, I do want to start off with Sam Merson and Sergei Bobrovsky because both of them had excellent games and it was just fun to watch both yeah, of them I mean, they, you know, they, make some they, great saves. They put on a goalie clinic, there's no doubt. There were some big saves on both both sides. Uh, yeah, nobody's going to fault the goaltending in this game. No. Um, you know, we talked a, a, a lot about um, Adderd and Jinning and how they did, but as far as, you know, the D overall versus Florida um, and how they were able to compensate for Walker not being there anymore and, you know, just in general go up against this really tough Florida team. And, you know, I, I don't think the first period was great. I will say that. <laughs> But I think as the game progressed, things got better and better. In the second period especially, they were able to limit shots, limit scoring chances. And, you know, the Panthers didn't get any high danger chances in the second or third period at five on five. Yeah, I mean, those are all great things. I mean, look, we talked about it. They were on a big win streak. And there's going to be a point where you lose on a big win streak. So the Flyers brought their A game and, and really forced it. And that's what happens. It's look, the Flyers played a great game, but it is also hard to win. Like, I don't know, 13, 14 in a row in this league too. Like, I think we all know that. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I mean, you, you take the win and you say, this is a great one. They battled great. The young players played great. They didn't make any mistakes. You know, they, they filled in for Walker. Like you said, everything worked. Yeah. And I would say that York and Sanheim have been doing the most shot blocking since Sealer got hurt. Yeah, I'm a little worried um, about with York. He's not built for A little for worried it. about that. <laughs> no. Yeah, he's he's so really I not think, built for it. Yeah. It's something to keep an eye on. But maybe with Jenning and Adder, they can, you know, they can start spreading out those duties yeah. a little bit yeah. more. Because they're bigger um, guys. It, yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that's something for the Flyers to take a look at, you know, in the short term, if, the, you know, this is the solution we're working with here on that front. But overall, real solid job done def uh, defensively. Uh, Travis Konechny returned to the lineup here, and I think he was itching to get something going right away. He was. He's he's a little off, though. You could tell he's not quite all there yet, yeah. but, but he was trying. Yeah, that was very clear that yeah. he was uh, trying to make things happen. So it's good yes. to see that his energy and um, his style of play did not wane. It's just his timing's a little off. And um, there was some weird stuff going on with the puck today where the puck would just like disappear off people's sticks. I know, I know. <laughs> but I don't know what that was, but uh, I think TK had a little bit of a run in with that issue as well. The other, I think, thing about this game is uh, apparently 
no penalties occurred in the third period. Yeah, that was um, really bizarre. It's like, <laughs> all right, at least they, but it, it was on both sides. So at least they yep, kept it yep. that way. Yeah, but it was just like um, a yard sale out there, as they say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, a mess. Yeah, yeah. But um, I, I do want to talk a little bit about the pace of the game, at least mm-hmm. from the Flyers' perspective. And um, I, I know there's not high expectations on this power play, but I do still think that they could have benefited from having Brink and Lixell oh, in the lineup. No I, just, I just feel like the pace of the game for the Flyers was a little bit slower and without those guys in it. Right. I mean, end of the day, they definitely would have benefited by having those guys. But this is the coach saying, we need this game. It's an important playoff game, uh, with game with playoff implications, I should say. And unfortunately, he sits to get young guys. And, you know, I don't know if they both needed to sit. I think I would have had Brink in there, too, honestly. Right. Right. And I, you know, the back of my head, I'm thinking, well, maybe he wanted to sit both of those guys because he was nervous about Jinning and Adder and how they were going to do. We didn't want to. They all know many. each other. Like, there's no negative I, there. Listen, this is again, this is me theor- theorizing I know, as to I what know. may have occurred. But I have to answer um, it when I hear it. Like, it's, you know, yeah, sorry. I get it. It's just like that is what, where my head went in terms of what's the logic here. Sure. Right. No, I get so, it. So um, I think that's a possibility. But I, I do think, yeah, especially that top power play unit was not a top power play unit with no. Atkinson hasn't been effective. TK was just coming back. Um, you know, York isn't the guy to lead that power play unit. No. So I just really felt like there could have been some extra jump, at least with Brink out there. Yeah. I mean, look, Adder gets more shots through than York. That's just a fact. doesn't matter if you're at the yep. AHL or the NHL. A shot's a shot. If he gets through, he gets through. It's just a fact. Right. Right. Well, yeah, I don't know if Adderd would have had a chance to get some power play time if they had, in fact, had a power play in the third period. But uh, he d- did not have any in, in the ones earlier in the game. But, uh, you know, nobody scored on the power play in this game because each team only had one. Um, right. And then there was, you know, some four on four time. No, but all right. So when you bring up a guy like Adderd, why are you bringing him up, Rachel? Because he has offense in his game and he's big and physical. You saw he stepped up a few times, took some shots on net, one missed, I think one hit. Yep. But the point is, yep. he's very good on the power play. But again, with this coach, it's like, no, no, no. You got to, you know, show me or, you know, maybe it's all Rocky Thompson's, you know, say. And I don't know how well Rocky Thompson knows him. So, you know, again, but this is what Adder does. I, I would have not have hesitated at all putting him on the second power play. Yep, I would not have either. But, uh, yeah, I think just a, a real solid effort overall in this one. Uh, Flyers do, in fact, face the Tampa Bay Lightning in their next game uh, on the road trip down in Florida. Uh, Tampa uh, just, I believe, lost to Calgary in this one six to three after calgary basically gave everybody away right um, at, that's what i'm saying deadline. hockey's weird hockey's weird yeah. when, when when um when you're around the deadline you know tempers are up uh, emotions are up so yeah hockey could be a weird game yeah so it, it'll be an interesting game against tampa because um, they just got uh, Duclair from the Sharks during the game. Yeah. Uh, so he will probably make his debut for Tampa against the Flyers, and Seems so likely. we'll have that. We'll have that to look forward to. Um, Vasilevsky has played the last couple of games uh, for them, and uh, I think that you know it's possible he plays again against the Flyers, but. He could be given a break. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure what they're going to do. That's a good good point. I'm un, I'm unclear. Yeah, we will see. But, um, you know, we did see Tampa pretty recently. Other than Duclair, not much has changed with them. 
And uh, I think that it's going to be another tough game because Tampa is in a playoff fight of their own uh, in that wild card spot. They are. And so they're going to fight hard, but they're an inconsistent team. They are. So there's there's opportunities to win versus Tampa. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, we'll, we'll talk more about that game after it's played on our Monday show. In the meantime, there was some more interesting activity around the NHL for trade deadline. Uh, today should be, uh, I don't know if it'll be boring per se, but uh, no. certainly seems like most of the action has already taken place. We're going to talk about some of the top moves on this year's trade deadline coming up next. We're driven by the search for better, but when it comes to the hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't the search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. So the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Listeners of the Locked On NHL will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibly more visibility at indeed.com slash locked on. So just go to indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. That's indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24 7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus national shows covering every league like Locked On NHL. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe. So, Russ, in addition to the Duclair to Tampa uh, deal that went through last night, it appears that Jake Gensel is going to Carolina, that the ga- they had games going on, so they were going to do the trade call after the game, according to several reports. Uh, seems like there's a, definitely a move to, uh, let's say, uh, move on from the past a little bit in Pittsburgh now. Yeah, I mean, there was going to be a high salary, so they the writing was on the wall. Uh there was no doubt, and and Pittsburgh got their clocks clean tonight, so they're probably suffering a little bit of an emotional break from that. Yeah. Um, look, I I think it's interesting that with Kyle Dubas in Pittsburgh, he reaches out and gets Michael Bunting as part of this trade. He helped mm-hmm. Michael Bunting pretty much become an NHL or a, a better NHL. He was good in Arizona, but he was even better with the Leafs. So, not yeah. surprising he took him. It'll be interesting to see what else is in that deal. Uh, it's good for both. I think Pittsburgh, you know, with a player like Bunting, uh, he could be pretty useful for them. So, yeah, I think the fact that Bunting's affordable, if they got another, like, prospect in this deal, they need to fill the cupboards a little there, too. Yeah, I would say so. But Carolina, I would say, is one of um, a handful of teams who are uh, going for it in the sense of the word for uh, this trade deadline. And, um, you know, they put a bunch of guys on waivers, including uh, Antti Ranta and Tony D'Angelo names of note there. And I just think it's important to mention that there was a waivers deadline yesterday where if guys were going to be eligible to play the remainder of the AHL season or in the playoffs in the AHL, they had to be put on waivers yesterday and clear today. Right. So um, some of all the waiver activity was related to that. And it's not that they'll necessarily assign the players down. It's just that they want the capability to reassign the players um, and put them through waivers now in order to meet that deadline. Like Tony D'Angelo. Yeah. Who hasn't played much this year. Nope. That is true. Uh, so with Auntie Ranta on waivers, I was just like, will the Flyers go for that? Um, I just, again, don't think it's a good idea. No, I don't. it's not. We've explained it's not. why. Watch last episode. We'll tell you why. 
Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They got to stay the course with the goaltending for the remainder of this season. Uh, there was a brief uh, rumor about Scott Lawton being held out of the game uh, due to, you know, trade issues. Not true. I mean, he was out of practice, um, and but he was in the lineup. So uh, no move on him uh, as of now. As of we this still can't recording. say it's impossible that he doesn't nope. move. I mean, I get it. I think he's staying, but I can't be completely shocked if something comes up. I won't believe it until the involved. deadline passes. Right. Honestly, right. I remember. Remember, folks, Wayne Gretzky got traded twice. So you know. Yep. yep. Uh, so just talking more about those teams that are going for it. Um, obviously Vegas is one of them, uh, with the Hannafin deal, uh, Anthony Mantha from the caps. Um, recently they got Jack Eichel back, but Mark Stone and Alec Martinez are on IR. So they needed to, uh, you know, fill the gap for now. And, um, I think that, uh, they're a team that's always going to go for it. And the cap means nothing to them. So yeah, it means nothing, but they didn't really give up a lot and they've already extended mm -hmm. them and it makes them very dangerous. It does. Um, you could make the argument that they don't have the greatest goaltending, although Aiden Hills had a, a really nice year. Uh, they're dangerous, man. They, they have a chance at repeating and it's very rare that I say in this era that, a t excuse me, a team has a chance to do that. Yeah, and as we know, Colorado is going for it, clearly um, acquiring Sean Walker and getting Casey Middlestat from the Sabres in a one-for-one -one deal with Bowen Byram. Um, what did you think of that trade? It was interesting. Um, I think Byram, because of the concussions and such, never really got fully on track uh, in Colorado. And I think as much as they were sort of hoping that they could really make him a, a permanent piece, they are kind of a team that's really on the cusp of winning the cup again. So middle stat was just too much to, to pass up on, especially with another year, right? He's got another arbitration year. So that's a big deal. And he's a center and he was the highest scorer on, on the Sabres. I mean, he's really reached, you know, he's reaching the heights that you thought middle stat could reach when he was drafted, but he was just kind of rushed into the league. Right. So good trade for both. I mean, it really is. This yeah. really helps the Buffalo defense this. And they probably looked at it and said, middle stat just wanted a little too much. Then they felt like they could afford money wise. So they got a good return, man. They did. They did. That's some really good work there. Um, Oilers tried to go for it. Um, I, I think that, Adam Henrique and Sam Carrick, you know, from the Ducks, uh, I think was a good move. I wouldn't say it is the move to get you where you want to go. Um, they got Troy Stetcher from the Coyotes as well, but I know that they were really looking for some like higher quality defensemen um, as well, and I, I just am not sure this is enough. <sighs> I don't know if it's enough either. I mean, I, I'm going to say it's not. I'm, I'm going to say it's not. I mean, he was the top guy on the market. That was left at this point. Yes, that was left at that point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we already know about Tarasenko to Florida. We saw him play. Yeah. Um, Wenberg from the Kraken to the Rangers. I feel like the Rangers have sort of been, you know, the... The, the team waiting outside the door, right? Uh, yeah, because I don't think they want to, you know, I, I put an article on NHLDraftBuzz.com uh, about three guys that shouldn't get traded. So, like, one's Gabe Perot, right? And we talked about him mm -hmm. on the show enough in his draft year, and he's really blossomed. So I think the Rangers don't want to give up Perot or Offman. And so, like, because of that, they fair. have to settle. Absolutely you know, fair. And so they have to settle for what they can do outside of that. So I think Wenberg was a good fit. I still think they need a defenseman. And I, honestly, I could see at the last minute them reaching out for Max Pacioretty because he's always wanted to play for the Rangers. He probably wouldn't be that yeah. much. And right now, healthy, he's actually, you know, doing OK. So that may be their um, their thought process. Yeah, could be. We Like I said, we've still got uh, slightly less than a day as we're recording. And I did want to uh, mention something. 
my brain was when I said Gretzky was traded twice, it, it was struggling. So I looked up the thing and Wayne Gretzky said he was only traded once the other time he was sold. So that's true in my <laughs> mind. You know, so I think it's funny to find that that quote because my I was even thinking, well, was that a trade? You know, it's funny. It's a it's many years ago. But um, but this deadline, okay. you know, a lot of teams were trading prospect for prospect. And I think the um, the situation with uh, Gabe's older brother. Jacob uh, mm -hmm. was the fact that Montreal could get him because they had Yannick Perot. And Jan right. Misak can be a pretty damn good goal scorer. And so I, I think Anaheim, it, listen, don't ever trust the Anaheim Ducks. They draft <laughs> well. They trade well. They, they you know, they, they know how to develop players. They've just hit a rut and they're, and they're you know, going to start building up. But Verbeek's doing a pretty good job there. And Meshach, if they just work with him a little bit, he's never going to be a terrific guy away from the puck, but he can score goals. And so I would always take the risk on the goal score because, honestly, Perot doesn't really stand out in any any given way. So I think that's, you know, they, they got the more upside there. And I give Nashville credit. You know, they got um, Anderson Dolan, too, who I do think can play. But, again, L.A. has been, you know, every year they seem to trade away a prospect or two that – you thought was going to be in their system and right. Nashville has been very good about collecting these guys this year and to try and shorten their span of, all right, let's, let's work in some other teams prospects here, guys that we've liked or could have drafted. And I think they've done a good job with that. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, but we'll, we'll see if there's anything else that happens uh, of importance. This trade deadline, we'll talk about it Monday, unless the flyers do something really big. Uh, then we will come on and do a quick reaction video on that. So uh, keep uh, watching your feeds to see if anything else drops. If I'll big be working news all day in a lot happens. of different places. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Me too. We'll, we'll be <laughs> You'll keep, be busy. Yep. We'll be quite busy. So uh, should that happen, keep an eye on your feeds. Like I said, in the meantime, I am Rachel. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. That's R-M-I-R-I-A-M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S-P-O-R-T-S-O-L-O-G-Y. Have a great weekend, everyone.